Now it's time to talk about L'Hopital's rule, and this is named after the French mathematician Guillaume de L'Hopital, who lived in the late 1600s, around the same time as Isaac Newton. And this rule that bears his name gives us a technique for calculating limits of indeterminate forms, things such as 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. And L'Hopital was known for some particular mathematical discoveries, and one of the things that he's rem remembered for is for publishing the first textbook on differential calculus. And the title of the textbook was Analysis of the Infinitely Small for the Understanding of Curved Lines. Now think about that title, Analysis of the Infinitely Small for the Understanding of Curved Lines. You can tell by the title that we're talking about differential calculus because we've seen that you can take a curve and you can imagine this curve being made of little straight line segments and these little short segments can form an approximation to the curve. But if you have an infinite number of infinitely small segments, that approximation becomes exact. And of course, this is what we've been doing in a lot of this course. We've been considering infinitely small quantities and we've seen that you can take those little uh, infinitesimal quantities and calculate slopes and find the slope of the curve at any point and solve a wide variety of problems. And L'Hopital was working on this sort of thing. So uh, his textbook was published in 1696, so that's less than a decade after the publication of the Principia. So these ideas were being widely discussed among mathematicians, not only in England, but also on the continent. And a lot of active research was going on, people trying to understand and further develop these ideas. And this analysis of curve lengths, for example, you can use these quantities to, cal to, to calculate the length along a curve. That was one of L'Hopital's original contributions to the field. But this rule, L'Hopital's rule, the rule that's named after him, was not actually discovered by L'Hopital. It was discovered by uh, Johann Bernoulli, and I'll get a picture. Um, here's L'Hopital and Bernoulli, and you see L'Hopital's dates there, 1661 to 1704. So Isaac Newton, remember, was born in 1642 and died in 1727. So Newton lived a very long life, and L'Hopital's dates actually form a subset of Newton's life. Bernoulli lived a little bit later, and this is one of the Bernoullis. In the Bernoulli family, there were, I think, seven or eight very well-known mathematicians, including Jacob Bernoulli, and um, this is Johann Bernoulli, and Bernoulli was Swiss, but he had been traveling, and he was in Paris giving some math lectures that L'Hopital attended, and so they met, and they talked, and L'Hopital ended up employing Bernoulli paid him an annual fee, basically to be a private tutor. Uh, Bernoulli would uh, correspond with him in letters and answer his questions and keep him updated on current developments that were going on in the field. So while L'Hopital did have some mathematical insights of his own, a lot of what he was doing in the textbook was just assembling the ideas of Bernoulli. And so L'Hopital's textbook uh, when he published it, he published it anonymously because he knew that it was Bernoulli's work and he didn't want to take credit for it improperly. And in the book, he specifically gave credit to Bernoulli for this rule that we still call L'Hopital's rule. So even though he published the textbook anonymously, people were still aware that, it, that he was assembling the book and publishing it. And so since people became aware of this technique through this textbook, they ended up calling it L'Hopital's Rule, even though it was Bernoulli's. And Bernoulli was apparently very upset about that. Bernoulli, very jealous for credit, uh, was angry at L'Hopital and accused him of plagiarism, even though L'Hopital published the work anonymously so that he wouldn't be taking credit. And even though he gave specific credit to Bernoulli in the book, not only for this rule, but for essentially the entire contents of the book. People still, though, refer to it as L'Hopital's rule to this very day. But despite that little spat between the two of them, they both went on to do significant work, and Bernoulli uh, ended up writing a textbook on integral calculus, I think about 10 years later. And so next, in the next few videos, we're going to be taking a look at L'Hopital's rule, what it is, how to use it, and I'll also give you uh, an explanation, what I think is a rather simple and elegant proof of why it must be true.